As we all predicted, Trump gave us so much material to work with regarding the rally that it's almost too much. So let's start with what's most important to all of our futures, this admission right here. You know, testing is a double-edged sword. We've tested now 25 million people. It's probably 20 million people more than anybody else. Germany's done a lot. Uh, South Korea's done a lot. They call me, they say, the job you're doing, here's the bad part. When you test, a, when you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people, you're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. They test and they test. We got tests that people don't know what's going on. We got tests. We got another one over here. Can you believe that he would actually just come out and admit that? I can't even comprehend how little he understands that that is going to be damning for him this election season. Literally tampering with numbers? Jeopardizing American lives? Unbelievable. Now they tried to cover it up as a joke on all the Sunday shows, every stooge they rolled out there yesterday, but it clearly wasn't. And you can especially tell when you look at the entire pattern. Remember last week when he said this? Again, our testing is so far advanced, it's so much bigger and better than any other country that we're going to have more cases. We're always going to have more cases. And as I said this morning, that's probably the downside of having good testing is you find a lot of cases that other countries who don't even test don't have. If you don't test, you don't have any cases. If we stop testing right now, we'd have very few cases, if any. Now that seems so random and stupid and out of place at the time, but now it makes a lot more sense. He said that because he actually did instruct them to slow down the testing. Unbelievable. Oh, and by the way, if your best defense is that the President of the United States is making a joke about something that has killed 120,000 Americans so far, then I think you have some problems. I'm just gonna say it. Now let's talk about the most sensitive issue for Donald in particular, crowd size. After boasting all damn week about how they had 1 million people who wanted to go and who signed up to reserve tickets, only about 6,200 showed up, according to the fire chief in Tulsa. They had this big setup outside the arena where Trump and Pence were supposed to speak too, but they ended up tearing it down and canceling because there was nobody there. Nobody at all. Now, of course, the campaign is blaming it on radical protesters. And by the way, radical is their new buzzword that's supposed to mean progressive Democrats, basically like AOC and stuff. But, of course, there were no protesters blocking the gates. And I also can't figure this out. Are they these big, tough, manly men with guns? Or are they scared away by people with signs? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it lines up to me. You've probably also heard a lot about the collaboration between teens, teens on TikTok and K-pop, teaming up to register hundreds of thousands of tickets to prank the Trump team like they signed up saying they were trying to reserve their spot to go. And the evidence does suggest that that happened. But even so, these were general admission tickets you had to show up for, not assigned seats. It's just trying to sign up to say you want to go, basically. I saw this point on Twitter. Even if 95% of the registrations were bogus, that means there were 50,000 real ones, and still only 6,200 of 50,000 showed up. So you have a problem there. The campaign manager, of course, didn't want to admit that he got punked by a bunch of teens. So he said they filter out bogus emails and stuff like that, and they watch for this. Of course they don't. I don't know that for sure, but it's just on par for them to not. But then if you're saying that, that all of these 1 million were legitimate, that means 993,800 real people registered and didn't show up. So any way you slice it, it is horrible for Trump and they know it. And finally, it's weird how racism from a U.S. president is the third most important topic, but he also talked about the coronavirus extensively and a couple times called it the Chinese virus, and worst of all, the Kung flu. I don't really have to tell you how racist that is, and today when reporters asked the press secretary why he used those racist terms, she said he never did, even though he's on camera, saying Kung flu on live television. I mean, these people 